You are about to learn how to do water reflections. Meet Ellen Howard. Hi, Ellen. Hey, Eric. How are you? Uh, you're coming to us live from California, so you're a long, long way from me. Must be like six o'clock in the morning there, huh? At least six o'clock. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this today. Tell us a little bit about what you're going to do today. Well, I'm going to take you on a journey into the marshlands, and we're going to cover just the moodiness of the marshlands and also the beautiful reflections you get um, in the waters. So it's one of my oh. favorite subject matters. Outstanding. Well, let's get right to it. Uh, I understand you're going to have to change your camera out, right? So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and show a couple of your images in the meantime, but uh, we'll get set up right away. I'm just going to pull her off for a second. Uh, so I'm just going to show you uh, just randomly some of Ellen's work. Ellen does beautiful work. Look at that. Lots of lots of energy, great compositions, beautiful color. There's a marshland painting. I think that's probably close to what we're going to do. Maybe not a sunset. This is lovely. And then this is what she's going to be painting today from, I think. So uh, what I'd like to do is to uh, tell you while we're waiting for Ellen to get, get set up um, is that um, today we have a winner. The winner of the easel brush clip, which we announced yesterday, is Marsha Wilson Holloway. And she's from Nebraska. So Marsha Wilson Holloway, congratulations. Thumbs up and applause. You get an easel brush clip. Um, tomorrow... I'll be announcing the winner from today's comments. If you make a comment today, and make sure you tell us where you're from. That's very helpful. Uh, we love to see people from foreign lands as well. And we give prizes randomly after the replays, right? So today, those of you watching live, and then after the replays, but you're going to get a chance to get a Plin Air Magazine apron, a really terrific apron. And so uh, make sure that uh, you put comments in today. Tell us where you're from, what you're doing. I should also mention that uh, we're coming up about halfway into the month. Uh, the Plein Air Salon is going to end on the 31st of the month. Plein Air Salon Art Competition, a uh, really great opportunity to enter, to win, and uh, get some uh, great prizes like $15,000 cash. All our prizes are cash. What a lot of people do is they make up these big numbers, but you know it's like lots of art supplies and stuff. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we just decided we're all cash. So you know we have 30, 31, 30,000, I think, in total cash because uh, we, we have monthly prizes and we have uh, others. Now uh, we've got Ellen back. Ellen looks like you've already kind of laid in your your um, underpainting there. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, actually, I wanted to let you know that I start my paintings actually with a sketch. So I do um, draw my composition out first before I even start working. And um, this is, um, yeah, it's an underpainting that I put on just because of the time constraints that we have. But I'm just thinking about my overlapping shapes here. I like to do a color wash. It gives me um, a basis for laying in more color on top and it just really gives a nice vibration. So, um, I've started using these panels. Um, it's the Lanta Art Solutions, and I'll show you what they are. They're double primed um, linen panels, and they have cut, it's a gesso or gator board here. And I was actually pretty um, frustrated with these panels at first because of the linen, when you put a brush stroke down, it kind of pulls it up. So one day I was just doing my undercoating, and I had to leave the studio, and I couldn't come back till the next day to finish it. And I realized that the underpinning had really um, set, and it gave me some beautiful marks. And you can see, too, is I love these little squigglies or the little drips you get in. Um, and it's basically just Gamsol and um, paint, no white. I want to keep it really translucent. So, so you're I'm, doing, oil, that's oil paint? Yep. Okay. And so tell us the name of the panel again. So um, I, I usually use Raymar, but um, Atlanta Art Solutions are these panels. They're just okay. wonderful. And um, they're great because they're, on, they're gator, and you can use them plein air also. So, All right. And then I just want to let you know, too, that um, I pre-mixed my colors. I love my colors. So I will show you my palette here. Well, so back it up. Back it up. Back it up. No, way back. Put it like where your painting is. All right, right yep. here. So they kind of tease me in the art circles that I have too many colors. I love my colors. 
But um, Bill Davidson has been one of my teachers for many years, and uh, he's the one that started me on pre-mixing my colors. And what I like is here's my sky colors, my back tree colors, kind of my front colors, and then I'm moving up to the foreground, and then here's my water. So you can see, I can see already that all these colors are harmonizing. And I tell my students, you know, it's ha it's really good to pre-mix because, you know, if you get your colors harmonizing already, then half the battle, you know, is done. And you can see, you know, if you've, if you've uh, mixed a color that is popping out or it doesn't go with everything else. So oh, that's a great idea because you can see it as a whole. Yeah, you can see it as a whole and you can see how nice it works together. So okay. I really, Now, do you do that when you're out plein air painting as well? You know, I do. I do. Um, I used to do it religiously. And then now I, because the light's changing so fast, there's certain areas, like if there's a color that I'm having a hard time with or, or something like, Sometimes with the colors of the rocks by the ocean, I'll pre-mix three or four of them because I know I need to, um, you know, get them more exact. Um, it just depends on how much time I have. But I, I do think it's a great tool. All right. Well, let's get started. I want to see this. All right. So I'm going to start with my sky, which I usually do. And um, it just kind of sets my light. And so what I'm constantly looking for here is the outline of the tree kind of sets the shape of the tree. So I'm also looking at this negative space through here. And so you can already see when I'm putting on the blue, how that tree line is coming out. Yep. So you guys can ask questions in the comments. I'm watching the comments and I'll, I'll tell where people are from, from time to time. That looks to me like a, a round bristle brush, is it? Yeah, so I also collect brushes. Yeah, so I it's love a different thickness. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's almost like collecting colors and collecting brushes. And uh, so this one, the filberts I kind of like for the sky and also the um, the marshlands. Is and that a filbert or a round? Yeah, this is a filbert, actually, and it's from okay. Art Essentials. And so people probably know Artwork Essentials for their wonderful um, easels or palette boxes, but um, I, they also make these great brushes. So I kind of toggle between these brushes and rosemary brushes are probably my two favorites. All right. So that's Artwork Essentials. That's Peggy Chang. Yep. We love Peggy. Peggy's awesome. Yeah. And so below here, I'm going to put in... Um, it's a little bit lighter towards the horizon, so I'm putting in a lighter sky color. Again, I'm looking at my trees here. And then I kept my cloud. You see it's white. I didn't put a wash on that because I've just found with the clouds, there's such light colors generally that putting a wash on, um, it usually doesn't work for me. So uh -huh. there's a little bit of a shadow underneath this cloud here. So I'm just putting it through. Okay. Welcome to on. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Welcome to Norway and Netherlands who are watching. Thank you for, for tuning in. <clears throat> and North New Jersey. Nice. <laughs> hey, you guys. If you if you would be so kind as to share this uh, right now, that helps because then other people might discover it and get a chance to see Ellen live. So I'm putting in a little warmth. There's always a, usually a little warmth in these clouds. And so I'm just putting that in right now. So my light is coming from the right. And so I'm going to have more of my light hitting that side. So a lot of times I kind of work up to my lights. I keep it in the medium value with a little bit of the yellow here. So my clouds at the end, I generally put kind of a white, a whiter stroke. Um, but what I want to talk about too is I have these great brushes by Rosemary. I think they're mongoose. I love these for my edges. So, well, the if they're mongoose, you can't get them anymore. Oh, I must. They must be old then. Yeah, they they're uh, very valuable because they, unfortunately they're not allowed to sell them anymore. But yeah. they're great brushes, yeah. yeah but they do have, they've come up with a mongoose substitute, which is pretty awesome. 
Yeah, so I'm just I'm just kind of softening these edges right now. Now tell me again. You said that you all you tend to make things a little whiter or lighter at the end of the cloud. Why is that? You know, I'm just looking over like the overall feel, and I put my my last like you know sparkles in at the end generally. You know, okay. so I, I do that. So I'm going to work down to um, the back trees now. Okay. And my back trees, I like. Um, so I. I think I've gotten my wash um, dark enough, but I just kind of like to layer over and keep it soft. And I want a lot of different colors in this back area. Okay. Well, Pakistan just tuned in. Hey, Pakistan, welcome. Hey, Pakistan. We're all one big happy artist family. New Zealand, hello, Hazel in New Zealand. I don't mention all the people in America. There's too many of them. You you get. I'd be talking all the time. I already talk too much. So I'm trying to keep some of this undercoating. You can see in here. That's kind of the. Uh, you know, you kind of have to think of where to put the stroke down because I like the transparency coming in. So I'm just trying to get my darks more on the right hand side here. Okay. Do you want to talk just briefly about why the color of those trees is so much bluer for those who might not understand that? So as the trees go back, uh, they're receding. So atmospherically, they're bluing off or cooling off in the back. So they generally have more blue in them. And I'm pushing that right now because, um, you know, I, I just like the turquoiseness of these cloud, I mean, sorry, the trees back here. Uh -huh. Well, so we just had England just tuned in, and we have, uh, let's see, we just Cape Town, South Africa. First time I've seen that one. Welcome. Cape Town, South Africa. That's nice. That's yeah. one of, on my bucket list to go over to Africa and do a safari and see the animals. I think that'd be awesome. Well, stick with me. I took a group over there. Unfortunately, I, um, I had the, the trip all sold, and then I found out I had a little medical issue I had to deal with, so I didn't get to go. But they, um, we sent our, our crew, and they did. They had a great time. So we'll do it again sometime because that's on my bucket list too. Yeah, it, it sounds great. So as you can see, I'm kind of building these colors up and just kind of layering the color back. So I have another um, row kind of back. I'm actually adding some purple down here. I'm just keeping it light still. And I like that I'm showing a little bit of this dark in here. I think it adds a little more texture. So these are also some really cool tools here. I've got, um, they're, they're used actually in, um, I guess, ceramics. I call them a scraper tool. But you can kind of, I'm having some birds come in. So you can kind of come back here and scrape out some things here. I was, um, I was lucky enough to go to Brittany um, with 12 other artists in the summer of uh, 2019. And I had the privilege of uh, painting next to Crystal Brown a lot of the trip. And I would go over and just kind of laugh because she had all these funky little um, tools that she used to make these marks on her paintings. And they were just beautiful. So you can use a variety of tools to kind of get some neat effects. Yeah, Crystal's an up-and-coming rock star, that's for sure. She won yeah. a prize in our portrait and selfie competition. Uh, wow, a lot of yeah. people coming in today. Hello, a couple more people in England. Welcome. Nice. And, all right, so I'm going to go keep moving forward, actually. So I've got these yeah. big trees. Um, I love the overlapping of the trees, so I'm going to go to my darker color here, darker green. Start putting, laying some in right here. So I love now, how. Is your goal to not cover part of that underpainting or? Yeah, it is it? actually. I feel like if I've done it right, that I'm going to get a thinner coat um, underneath. And so I don't, I really don't want to cover it all up, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and you try to keep that fairly transparent in your dark? Yes, I do. All right. And Hello, Philippines. Perfect. Hello, Maui. You can see it's starting to build up a little bit here. 
And I like this warmth and brown because there's a lot of um, warmth in the trees kind of bouncing up. Even in the, the bushes on the ground, there's a lot of warmth. So again, I'm looking at a lot of times the tree, it's that edge that defines the tree. So I'm looking um, at the edges. In California, we'd have these gorgeous eucalyptus trees too. Oh, I know, I miss them so much. I used to live out there. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. Over in the East Bay, correct? Yeah, Walnut Creek area. Nice. Yeah, I'm on the South Bay. We did a uh, California art club paint out at my house because I lived with this incredible view. Oh, that's awesome. I met a lot of great people that day. Yeah, I've been very active with the California art club. Um, I'm one of the co-chairs for the San Francisco region with Paul Cratter. And um, we did, before COVID, I think we had an event every single month. It was just fantastic. Well, I'm and jealous because when I was out there and a member of of uh, in, in that chapter, you know, there was not much going on. So I'm glad you're doing that. Yeah. And even now, um, you know, I started to be part of the uh, virtual tax force and it's been great that the club has really stepped up and um, started creating a lot of uh, virtual exhibitions. And yesterday there was a great demo by Kathleen Dunphy that I attended, wonderful artist and painter. And, um, and you guys should know that we have a phenomenal new exhibition that we're launching. The deadline to enter is uh, January 31st. It's Excellence in Fine Art, Traditional Fine Art. And we have the honor of having Mr. Peter Trippi as our first judge. So uh, Peter Trippi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> giving you a hard time. He's a great friend and, of course, works with me. Um, now, you received an award recently. Congratulations. Tell us about that. So I was honored to receive um, the Volunteer of the Year um, for the California Art Club. And um, so it was, I, I really enjoyed. Uh, Peter and Elaine Adams are just phenomenal people and uh, the president and executive director. And so um, I got the award for my work as a chapter chair and also for my work um, you know, helping to launch this new virtual exhibition. Uh, and I congr Congratulations. Also, oh, thank you. You had a great award too from them. Yeah, that was kind of sweet. That was really nice to get some recognition. Well, you do a phenomenal job of promoting the arts and promoting artists in the business. So that's really great. So if, if the people watching from other, other places, can they be members of the California Art Club? Oh, yes. Yeah, we're always accepting new members. And one of the things that people um, may not know is obviously we have um, a lot of chapters in California. We have about 12 chapters, but we have um, all these out-of-state chapters, too. You can be all over the United States and join as a member. So and what's, the be what's the benefit to being a member if you're from outside uh, of California? Well, you can apply to all of our shows. Um, we do regular shows that you can apply to, especially the one that we're just launching right now. And then all of our educational uh, things you're invited to attend to, all of our demos, our critiques. So it's a great, and it's a great way to meet other artists and be part of the community. I've kind of always felt that, um, you know, being part of a larger community helps everybody, you know, yeah. Well, I've often, you know, we've, <clears throat> when our kids are done with college, we've thought about maybe moving somewhere else. And we sure loved living in California and we miss the community. The art community is so strong. Uh, so being part of the California art club, no matter where you are is great. And, and the shows really lift the quality of all the artists. It's amazing the work that Peter and Elaine Adams have done to revitalize. And <clears throat> this club's over a hundred years old, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah have a lot of great history and they have a wonderful staff and uh, yeah, it's been amazing. I think, you know, the people who have really shined um, during this pandemic, you know, it's, a, you know, trying like yourself, trying to find solutions um, to help the whole community and, um, you know, to stay present. So consistency really matters, I think, you know. So I've kind of laid a little bit of my trees. This is cooler over here. I want it to be a little bit warmer. 
I'll still add more warmth as I go on, but I'm just going to work in back here. So I have a little bit of water that I have coming in here, but this is the back of the marsh area. So I want this area to be cooler as I work forward. So let's see here. By the way, I should mention that the, uh, there, the three great publications in the art world uh, fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine, but one, one that's almost probably better than, than those. I shouldn't say that. But the newsletter for the California Art Club is one of the best publications. That alone is worth the membership. It's just so well done. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, yeah, it's really, really well done. I agree with that. Let me put in these uh, front trees a little bit here. All right. Mm -hmm. So I've got this coming down. You you guys have any it. questions, put them in the comments section. Yep, I'd love to answer any questions you have. So you said you took a Bill Davidson workshop. Tell me, um, tell me about that. Um, yeah, Bill's been my teacher for many years, actually, which I've been very fortunate. And um, and obviously, Bill's a great artist. Um, but what I like about to him, too, is it's a very much a can-do can spirit that he has when you're with him. And um, I also really like that um, it's his second career. So for me, this is my second career, too. And sometimes when you're starting out um, as an artist, it's a little overwhelming or intimidating. And so I've kind of followed his path and what he's done and been able to do. And, you know, I think showing up and his, his ability, what I really like about him is he's continually growing. He's continually looking for ways to improve. And so, we, have a top, we have a top secret project we're going to announce, I think, on Monday with Bill. Oh, nice. And, and it's <laughs> unlike anything anybody's ever done before. Yeah, if you have the opportunity to work with them, definitely do. He's a great, great teacher. So um, I've been very fortunate to be able to work with him for a lot of long time. Well, it shows in your work. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. All right, I'm going to move down here. And as you can see, I'm getting a little bit warmer in the marsh area here. Somebody asked about reference photo. I'm just going to show the reference photo real quickly. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, because I can. Here we are. So this is a reference. Oh, no, that's a reference painting, a photo of a painting. Yeah. Right? And that's what you're using as your reference to the painting? Yes. And, you know, but I plein air paint quite a bit. And um, I actually started plein air painting um, in the marshlands. It's one of my favorite subject matters. And so I've been down there seeing the colors. So, um, you know, I've designed this based on my experience, you know, painting, you know, on location. When you say um, down there, where is down oh, there? Palo Alto Baylands. So it's about a half an hour south of my, my house. Oh, okay. So I'm actually going to back up and I wanted to, you know, this is about reflection. So, um, I need to reflect these trees coming down in here. So I'm just going to start putting that in a little bit. And reflections can be a little bit scary sometimes because you're losing your lines. You know, it's kind of, and you want these reflections to be really soft and watery. So I'm looking above these darks and um, I'm trying to look at some where some of the light is coming in here too. But I am losing my line. And what I'll do sometimes is I'll reverse my stroke coming up through here. And so if you'll notice, my strokes are going vertically down and that's important when you're doing reflections. And I will show you why that's important um, as I lay over the color. So you wanna keep them going down because you're gonna lay the water over. So right here, you know, sometimes just measure it up. Like, where is that reflection hitting? So somebody asked a question about your underpainting. We covered it before, but yes, there's some squiggly lines coming down. She used Gamsol, very thin, almost like watercolor. And uh, this is oil paint that she's painting in on, yeah. a, on a linen panel. And 
she gets those effects and that way they kind of bleed through and make things believable. Yeah, and I kind of like, I'm seeing right now, I'm not com completely covering it. I kind of like this effect. You know, you just, you just kind of have to experiment. Like I saw um, Mary uh, Garish on Tuesday and I was like, whoa, she put on this great ochre color right on top of her painting and she was fearless, you know, on trying some new things. So sometimes by experimenting with these different effects, you can really get onto something new. Know, that uh, fearless is a good thing. Sri Lanka, welcome. All right. So I'm also doing the other direction, this back area. So when I was designing this too, I wanted to have some strong diagonals going this way. And then it flattens out in perspective as it goes back. And so... Um, my center of interest, so I'm directing you this way, is going to be here. I'm going to have some birds coming in. The lightest part of my cloud and more of my um, light coming here. So I know it looks pretty funky right now, but um, you just have to be patient and it'll, it'll come together. So I'm going to go back to um, this area here and add some more color in here. Hey, everybody, give Ellen some encouragement. Give her some some likes and some thumbs up if you're if you're enjoying this. Every artist needs to be encouraged, even even the great ones. <laughs> no, that's true. And I think when you when you pick teachers too, you know, you pick people that are encouraging to you also, because uh, you know when you're starting out, it's a lot to learn. You know. Well, and we're we're all very insecure when we start out, and sometimes forever. And uh, sometimes uh, a teacher can destroy your, uh, your interest in going forward. I've met far too many people who have been devastated by teachers because, you know, they're, sometimes I, it, tough is okay, but tough and encouraging is important. Yeah, and I, I did have that experience. It was my first plein air class ever or workshop ever, and I was supposed to go with a friend who was – a, a well-established artist and she backed out at the last minute. I'm like, I'll go, you know, and I hadn't really had a lot of plein air experience. And I have to say the teacher was pretty brutal with me. And, uh, and it was hard to get over that, but I, you know, I was just like, okay, it's one experience. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go for it. So, you know, we don't. have an expert on mindset who's going to be on the show in February and uh, one of the world's leading experts on mindset. And, and I wanted to have her on because I think that the way we self-talk uh, yeah. impacts everything. So when that's on, you guys are going to want to see that. No, that would be awesome. And I've been reading your book and um, your art marketing book. And I love um, your topic on masterminds, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. masterminds changed my life. I, I wish I had discovered them 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I... I spend a lot of money to attend masterminds. Masterminds, for those who don't know, are basically groups of people and you become one mastermind. You work on their business, they work on your business. And usually there's some experts in the crowd. I'm in one now. And it's just, it's, it's, I've been in three different ones. It's life changing. I'm thinking about making one for the art, artists, marketing industry. I hate the word industry, but for people who want to really, you know, somebody who says, okay, I need some help. I need some coaching. I'm going to, I'm going to need to be part of a group to, you know, so I can get to the level of, uh, you know, a brand like a Peter Adams or a Richard Schmidt or somebody like that. I would love to be part of that. That's really up my alley. Well, I haven't decided if I want to take the time yet. Time is so precious. It is precious. Yeah. I'm just putting a little bit of a shadow underneath this area here. Um, underneath my trees. Okay. So, blending that in, a little more shadow in here. For this painting, I want everything to be soft. I just like the moodiness of the marshland. Yeah. Um, you know, and during this time period, too, I've been really attracted to just kind of tran tranquil scenes. Um, and, and I actually spent a lot of time doing... Um, uh, sunsets during this time too. Oh yeah, I'll bet. Hello, yeah. Germany. Welcome. Uh, ich bin Eric Rhodes. 
That's about mm -hmm. all I. That's all I can do. <laughs> all right, I'm going to add a little bit in the back here, um, some water, just so you can see how this is coming through. So I love kind of having this water line in the back. Ellen, are you using water soluble oil? No, I'm not actually. I'm a Gamblin or Sennelier girl. Yeah, I thought so, but there's somehow there's a, a water soluble discussion developed in the comments. I wondered if I had missed that somehow. No, I yeah, and you know a lot of people are going towards that. And I understand. You know, we have to be careful of all the cadmiums and and uh, things like that. So I, I get that. I think you know when you start out using something and it works, you kind of stick with it. And well, that, that water soluble still has cadmiums and so on, so they're not cadmium free. They're just, no. they're just, they just don't require a turpentine or, or gamsol or something like that. Mm -hmm. Hello, Ireland. Welcome, Mary. So I'm getting there. So, all right. I have not put my lights in here, but I just want to say if it's going, I can put some more light kind of coming up through here. I'm going to pull up the reference image real quick again, Ellen, because I just was curious. Okay, so there is there's water back there. I see that's all right, yeah. terrific. Now there's a tendency by a lot of people who want to just kind of put in every little leaf and every little um, strand of weed. How do you deal with that? You know, um, I've learned that really keeping the bigger shapes um, clear um, gives that. You, you don't want to show the viewer every little nuance. You, it's, I almost want to create something that you're going to dream at. You know, you're going to fill in those blanks yourself, you know. So that's kind of the, the feel that I'm going for. Okay. Dreamy. Dreamy, yeah. You know. So I'm going to start putting in a little bit of the water color here. So what's um, going to be happening? You're, you're going to put in the the... The, once you get this filled in, then what are you going to do? You're going to go back in and start putting in detail? Yeah, I'm going to put in some more detail. All right. I'll be anxious to see that. That's a, that's fun to watch the jewels happen. Yeah. So I'm going to get this blue it's reflecting from the sky here. Might be a touch dark. Let's see. The reflections are typically darker, are they not? Yes, they are. They are typically darker than what is reflecting above. So this is the part where you kind of want to slow down a bit. Why? Um, because you want the, I'm going to have these strokes going across, but you're, you're also thinking of this as a pattern. And um, because you've worked so hard putting these um, reflections in or the, to set that down, you want to be careful on how you go across. So I usually spend a little bit more time thinking this through. I mean, oils are forgiving, so, you know, you can come back. So you can kind of see that blue coming in there right now. So I'm going to go to my next color, which is a little bit more turquoisey. I'm going to start adding a little bit more of that in. There's some more turquoisey coming from the top of those trees there. So I love laying in color. So my blue is going to go more across on this side. So I can start laying that in a bit more. Do you have to wipe your brush out in between those strokes so that you're yeah. not carrying? Yeah, I do. Um, also, it's a, it's the amount of pressure that you're putting on. So if you have a good even pressure, you can kind of get away with it. So as you can see, do you see how now, like when I put those strokes in vertically, so the water is, is sitting on top of it now. Oh. So that's... So the stroke direction is really important. So I will also, you know, this is where I said I'll take some time, but I take those that soft brush I was talking about with the clouds, and I don't I don't want any hard lines. So I'm going to take a long time on making sure that everything is soft here and watery. But if this is too much for me, did I cover it too much? I'll come back again with the vertical stroke. I'll do a couple different vertical strokes. So this edge line, like I said, is something that you kind of get lost and found all the time. So 
I'm going to come back in here and like reestablish. Okay, I want it a little bit darker here. So I'm constantly reestablishing where that line is. So one of the brushes I use, you don't want to do it all, all the time, but if you can see, there's a, this little angled brush. And yeah. my good friend, Kim Lordier, actually introduced me to this brush, and I just love it. And what kind, I, of, what kind of brush is that? It's um, a Royal and Nickel, and Lang Nickel brush. Okay. It, it's a dagger, um, a quarter dagger. So I love um, using also the, the Gamblin uh, solvent-free gel, this one here. Yeah. So I basically dip my brush in the solvent-free gel because I want it really loose. And then I take, um, I dip it in the color that I want. So I come back here and you see how it makes these great little, you can use the side of your brush, but they make these great little um, bead-like imitations here. Yeah. And so I will spend a lot of time um, kind of working it. I want some of this to overlap in the back. I've already laid in my water here. You know, you can take it and darken it in certain areas. Use the other side of it coming up, bring it down. I mean, it's what's fun about the marsh, it's constant play. Constantly going back and forth here. If you guys are enjoying this, give her some applause with a heart or a thumb up or something. I am enjoying it. I'm learning a lot. Oh, thank <clears throat> what amazes me is I've been painting for 20 plus years. I know lots of artists. I've taken lots of workshops. I do a lot with artists, as you know. And every single day, I still pick up something I didn't know. Yeah, it's amazing. I, you know, um, I teach classes and uh, in the middle of my class, I tell my students I make them put their brushes down. You know, obviously they need to step away from their painting, but also like you can learn from your fellow artists. Like there's so many little tricks or, you know, I've had so many students go over, oh, I didn't know you were painting that or, oh, that's really cool. Or how did you do that? You know, so not only when you attend those workshops, you know, make time to walk around and see what somebody else is doing. It's, uh, yeah. The thing that I, that I, when I'm out plein air painting with buddies, uh, I will oftentimes, you know, take a break and walk around and I'll walk and, and look at what they're doing. And then I, I get tempted to go, oh, I like what they did there. I think I'll put that in mine. And then I start screwing things up. So I've had to learn to, uh, to not do that. I try not to look at their work while, while I'm still painting and uh, it helps. Yeah. But okay, now wait, talk about what you're doing there. You're laying in some white. Blue, and as you can see, just by me laying in this blue, you're seeing that water line. So I'm not touching this. I want you to see that complete reflection right here. So by me laying it in, you can see now where that bank of the marsh is coming. So that's what I'm trying to represent there. So it's those small little details at the end. Like a lot of times with my students, they want to rush through something. You've got to lay that foundation, you know, like you've got to make your cake and you, you ice it at the end. You know what I mean? So when you come back with these little, little gems. So this is the stuff that takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to have another watermark kind of come through here. You know, if it's too much, just wipe it off, you know, do it again. So I'm going to have some lighter color coming through here. Let's see. So would you mind, from the comments, would you mind saying the name of the dagger brush again? I think you said it was Royal Nang Langnickel. It is. It's Royal Langnickel, and it's a dagger, and it's a quarter inch that I have. Okay. And it's great for the marsh marshes. And that's, you know, this is what I kind of do at the end. So you know, I pick my spots. You don't want to do it everywhere. You know what I mean? Because you just... Um, like I said, you don't want to put too many details in, but you want to give enough details that people know what it is. I yep. love these little reeds coming down here too and the reflections. So that's coming back through there. So what I'll do too is I want to bring a little bit of that blue on the other side too, because I'm looking at the whole um, shape and I want to have a little bit more coming here. 
Well, I gotta, I gotta read one of these comments to you. It's so fabulous. Let's see if I can find it again. Um, I've been watching for, I've been watercoloring for 30 years, but now I'm inspired to take up oil painting. Thank, uh, thanks to Ellen. Hope I'm not too old. You're not too old, Judith. No, Never you're too not. Old. And you know, I, I love, um, you know, there's a book by Angela Duckworth, Grit. You know, it's, and they, you know, with, when people are starting out, they're like, oh, I'm not talented. I can't paint. I can't do this. And it's, uh, sorry about that. Is that yours or mine? No, it was my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I turned everything off. Oh, well. And, uh, Somebody probably called to say, hey, did you know that you're on Facebook right now? Maybe. maybe. Isn't that funny? So um, I will keep going. And what I like right here is sometimes I'll take, go to my soft brushes. And so I want a little bit more light in the front. There's more light in the front here. So Judith, gonna... uh, she's almost 82. I said, Judith, it doesn't matter. It's, no. it's, a, it's just a number. It you is. Got plenty of, yeah, plenty of time. Yep. You can, um, you I'm can, not even at the halfway point yet. <laughs> you know, I would just tell new students like consistency is great. You know, just show up, show up and do your best work. And, you know, for people that say, well, I don't have time to paint. Well, you know, you have time to go to the doctors or do your errands or whatever. So I say write down in your day timer, right? You know, from nine to 12 on Wednesday, I am painting and do not book anything else in there. You know, start out with that kind of a, you know, segment. And then, you know, as you get better or as your interest grows, you know, you can add more time in there. You know what I mean? And you can always find time. You know, we don't realize how much time we waste. Yeah. That's you know, I, was, I, was, I was sitting around the other day and I, and, and my phone popped up, says, you've spent six hours on social media. It's like, what? How did yeah. I do that? Yeah. You don't think you're spending that much time. What, what I've learned also that's been very helpful uh, that might be uh, help people do this. I'm doing this program from my studio and I normally, I have an office in a different part of the house. And I, uh, so I've just been staying here and working. And so I keep a painting going most of the time. I haven't the last couple of weeks, but uh, so if I'm on a phone call or something, I can be on that phone call and be touching up the painting. And that way I get a little bit more painting time in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can make ways to um, make it easier for you to get that painting time in. There's like little tricks to do that. I have a, I have a studio in um, San Carlos, which is a little bit, maybe 15 minutes from my house. And, um, but you know, I, I'll spend time just even drawing and composing. So by the time I get to my studio, you know, I have some ideas already going on, so. That's helpful too. Yeah, great idea. And you've got a big thing coming up. I hear you've got a 10th anniversary coming up pretty soon. Uh, well, it's kind of a misnomer, but yes, uh, 10, uh, 10 years this time with Plein Air Magazine. I launched it uh, and then I ran it for either two or three years. I can't remember. And then we had trouble. We couldn't, couldn't survive because nobody thought Plein Air was a thing. And so I... I uh, essentially converted it to fine art connoisseur because I needed a broader, because uh, the, uh, the galleries wouldn't support it and the art materials wouldn't support it. And then I thought, you know, I just got, I got to bring it back at some point. And immediately, of course, I irritated a lot of people when I took it away, but I didn't have the money to keep it going. And um, then I just, one day I said, I think it's time. I think there's more people plein air painting. So I brought it back. And by then the advertisers were, were interested in the movement and what was happening. And uh, so it's 10 years this time, but it's actually about 13 years. That's great though. I no. mean, really wonderful. It's a, it's a great magazine. Both your magazines are just wonderful. So. Thank you. Plein Air is the number one selling art magazine in America at Barnes and Noble. Just blows me away of all things. Why would that happen? But it's cool. That's well, you stayed consistent, you know. Yeah, and, I, and I'm working on a, a a national television show about plein air painting, and uh, it's called the Great Outdoor Painting Challenge. We have we're actually still soliciting cast members, 
Uh, we're, tr we're in the midst of trying to raise the uh, $700,000 to produce it. So we haven't had any progress since COVID. So we're kind of starting up again. But uh, we'll raise that money and get that out. Uh, that I've got a national network committed to it. And uh, they think that once we get it on the air, everybody in America is going to be wanting to do plein air painting. So I think we can really touch a lot of people if I can find the right person to step up and, and give us some money. Yeah, I mean, uh, the beauty of plein air painting, especially during COVID, I mean, you can get out and experience nature. And it's, it's a, a definite mindset. Like, you know, like I said, I love the marshland, but the other place I love is I love being by the ocean. And, you know, just going out um, for a day and painting by the ocean, like that changes my whole mindset. I mean, it's just wonderful. Oh, it's just, it's everything about plein air painting is so wonderful. It's just, it's, it's life changing. It is life changing. It it's is. so much fun. So on Sunday, uh, I woke up and it started, it was, it was kind of rainy. And, and then, uh, uh, it started snowing here in Austin, which is highly unusual. And, uh, so, um, I said to the kids, I'm after, I said, after church, I'm going to go, we're going to do some plein air painting. And, uh, so we, I waited till about two or three inches accumulated. And then I went out and I love painting in the snow. I didn't used to like it cause I didn't like being cold, but I figured out how to get around that. I'll show you a quick picture. This is uh, from Sunday we had snow. It was just so beautiful. That's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, so I, it, it's just, just something about it that, you know, you're outdoors, you're being creative. It's just the best. Yeah. Yeah. I encourage everybody to try it. And even like with social distancing, you know, you can go and paint with your friends. You don't need to stand near them, but it's nice to have that community. So Absolutely. It's one of those things you can still do, which is really awesome. So I'm just putting in some little tree branches in here. This is my details. I still have a little bit of this drip going on, so I don't want to um, fully cover that. But just starting to put a little bit of this in, you know, and if the tree trees too much, you just kind of come back in here and just soften this area. It's really, it's really easy to do. Outstanding. You guys give her a thumbs up or a heart. She's doing great. Uh, Ellen, we got about seven minutes. Okay. Well, I'm going to put some birds in there actually, because. What kind of birds are you going to put in? They're probably going to be the marshland birds. Like this beautiful egrets. I love the egrets. And so they're all white. And, you know, I'm just going to do a pattern. You don't want to just do one bird, you know. Um, so I'm going to do about five birds. It's nice to have an odd number coming through here. So my focal, I, you know, I know people talk about this, but like the golden mean. So one thing I didn't talk about when I first started is, you know, every painting I make my third marks here on the top, the bottom, on the sides. Kind of like a tic-tac-toe board is what you're saying. Yeah, a tic-tac-toe board. And it's in this circle, or I'm sorry, in this square, that those points of those intersections is where a lot of times you want your focal point to be. So right here is kind of where I want to direct you. So this is the time that I'll kind of come back and, you know, I'll pop up my color in here. I'll pop up my focal. So I'll put a little bit more rich color. So hopefully I'm getting you to the diagonal, strong diagonal coming up through here, picking up these birds over through here. And then, like I said, I will come back and um, I will pop up that cloud with a little bit more white on that area here. Um, So I'll put a little bit more light coming in the side because that's where my direction of my light is. Now, do you always make sure that that white has a little bit of tint of something in it, or is that pure white? No, I'm putting at the end. I put in pure white, and um, I've just learned that um, it gives gives me more of a pop. Like I do have a little bit of yellow next to it, so I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to constantly work with my my edges. So over here, like with my trees, this is something I do at the end. I'm going to soften all these edges. I still need, in my opinion, need to put a little bit more light on these trees. Um, 
more highlight, but I just want to show you how, you know, I don't want these edges to be something that draws you back there. So, I'm so just you're gonna, softening, so you're softening them. Yeah, I'm softening all these edges. I also noticed the top of your trees is a lot lighter, I guess, catching the sunlight. Yeah. And, you know, if I don't like that shape in here, all right, so I can come back with my small brush and look how easy this is. So I'm constantly looking and defining my shapes, but I can come back in here and redefine this by just adding some more light. What if I want some tree holes in here, which I love doing tree holes, like the light kind of popping through here in the back. And so, you know, you just experiment you know, maybe that maybe that's too rounded. Maybe I want to make this smaller. So I will take the time now to kind of go back and refine the edges of these trees. Here's a comment from Northern. Uh, hi, I'm from Northern Ireland. This is a brilliant tutorial for me right now, as my landscape has lots of greens. Oh, yes. nice. So, Ellen, uh, what's the key to uh, making sure your greens don't feel too garish? Okay, the key is you always need to add some red in there. Always do. Um, the, the, That's a complementary color. Yeah, it's a complementary color. And, um, you know, really practice. Like, I probably have, like, 15 different colors of green on my palette. Let me show this, show this to you again. And what I'm looking is I'm taking, like, the mother color. You know, like, I'll make this mother color what I call a mother color, like, here. But, yeah. And I'll... How do I add a little warmth to it? How do I, oh, I need a little more blue or add a little more blue. So they're just temperature changes. Some are warmer, some are cooler. As these are my back tree colors, look how cool they are compared to the ones coming up front. So, um, you know, and I love mixing colors. You know, that's one of my, one of the things I love doing, experimenting with the colors. Yeah. You're doing a great job here. I wish we I wish we didn't have to end so soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't why don't you come back on camera so we can kind All of right. say goodbye? Thumbs up and applause for for Ellen Howard. This is absolutely fabulous. Uh, I love this. I mean, I I I've got the best job in the world, Ellen. I get to watch people paint. Oh, thank thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. Uh, well, we love you, and we love what you do. Will you show us your studio real quickly? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to take you on a flying machine here. So let me unplug my laptop and see if I can get this to go, okay? All right. So I've got a really small studio, but it's mighty. <laughs> so as you can see, I've got the setup here. Behind the curtain is all my frames, uh, my light back and then on my fun couch I love to have visitors so when no pre covid after covid we'll have more visitors but it's a really small space but um, super fun I've got my mirror back there so I can see my shapes and uh, and values more correct and of course a little fridge there with my wine you know for visitors so <laughs> do you drink wine and paint no I actually don't I paint first and then when I'm finished I will have my, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I I was I was painting and drinking. Uh, I had been painting I, this big painting of thirty by forty that I've been working on, and I was making great progress. And I worked on it for weeks, and then I made the mistake of painting while, while having some wine, and I just started being free and fearless, and I just completely blew it. So I have to start over. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that happens sometimes, yeah. Oh, our judgment. Well, Ellen, this has been fabulous. Uh, do you do any online teaching? Do you have any workshops, anything that people can look into? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of Zoom workshops, and I've got one coming up in February. I believe it starts on the 8th um, for the Mendocino Art Center, and it's painting the Pacific Coast. So I'll be doing all the ocean and rocks and coastal scenes. And then right. I, I write a monthly newsletter. So if anybody would like to subscribe... And it's a great way for artists too. It keeps me honest. So every month, you know, mid month, I'm like, what did I learn? You know, what have I created? What can I teach? And I, it, you know, I'm like, by the end of the month, I have to have those things done. And and um, each month's a different theme of what I've learned. Outstanding. 
Well, Ellen, this has been absolutely fabulous. Uh, I, I ask everybody to hang with me for just a minute because I'm going to ask you a very important question. Ellen, uh, I'm honored that you would be on the show today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll talk afterwards. So I'll see you in a minute. All right. Sounds good. All right. So I need you guys to give me some help. Uh, we have been doing this show every day for 295 days, pretty much continuously. And uh, we've been doing this at 12 noon every day on Facebook and, and YouTube. You can find it by searching Streamline Art if you're new to us. And every day at 3 p.m., we've been doing offering samples of the over 600 art instruction videos we've produced with the world's top masters. And so every day, 295 days, we celebrated when we got to two weeks because we thought this we would be in quarantine for two weeks, right? We celebrated again when we got to 100 days. We celebrated again when we got to 200 days. And, I, you know, I ended up giving away a ton of stuff. Uh, and I've been giving away stuff every day, too. So day 295 today, guess what's coming up on the 19th, the day before the big inauguration? The 19th will be day number 300. And I want to make it really special for you. Uh, day, day number 300 is huge. Day 365 is going to be even bigger because it'll be a year in. But day, day 300, I need something special. So I need you guys to put comments in of what you would like me to do to celebrate on day 300. And maybe it's prizes. Maybe it's a special guest. Maybe it's several special guests. Maybe it's a new concept entirely. But I want you to put your ideas in and tell me what you would like to see. And, and I'll, I'll go through your comments later after the replays and so on so everybody can chime in. And then I'll try to find out what to do and do that. So I would really appreciate that. And I got to make a decision today because I don't have much time to invite people or, or get, peop get things under control and get them on board. So I want to also mention to you guys a couple other things. First off, a lot of you are new and I wanted to tell you a couple of things. First off, I would love it if you would follow me. Uh, on Instagram, it's Eric Rhodes and it's spelled R-H-O-A. DS with no E. So if you would do that, that would be terrific. Today at 3 p.m., our art instruction video is a classic called Painting Metal, and it's from Johnny Lilladal. It's from this one of her original videos. Uh, Johnny started the art instruction video business 35 or 8 years ago, and uh, you're going to get a chance to see how she did that. So that's going to be today at 3 o'clock, Johnny Lilladal. You don't want to miss that. We have a $6,000, excuse me, $7,000 painting uh, that we're giving away. This is uh, the great Thomas Schaller. Thomas Schaller is uh, considered to be probably one of the best watercolor artists in the world. And uh, he's, of course, being featured on our watercolor live event coming up later this month. And he decided to enrich this by giving away a painting so anybody can win. You don't have to go to Watercolor Live to win it. And this is what it would sell for in the gallery. So uh, what a chance to win a $7,000 painting. I mean, I don't have many $7,000 paintings around my house. So uh, just go to paintinggiveaway.com and you don't have to pay anything. You just put your, put your inf info in there and then uh, we're going to do the drawing during Watercolor Live. If you're not there, you'll find out soon after. All right. Speaking of Watercolor Live, it is the world's leading experts. One of those experts is going to be on tomorrow, Matthew Bird, a watercolorist. Uh, look at the quality of this still life work. And he's going to be doing something for us tomorrow. So you want to make sure that you tune in for that. Here's something very, very brief. 15 seconds. Hang in there. Join the world for Watercolor Live, the ultimate watercolor learning event, January 27th to 30th. Four days of online art lessons from top master watercolor artists from around the globe. Learn to paint nature, people, cityscapes, flowers, and more. Become a better artist. Click the link to learn more and get our free ebook, 101 Watercolor Secrets from the Top Masters. I got to I got to tell you guys that you guys are crushing it. We've we've uh, done plein air live and then we did realism live and now we're doing watercolor live. We got a couple others around the corner too. And watercolor live is crushing it. I mean, we're almost at 1500 people, or excuse me, 1600 people. 
Uh, you've still got till the 20th to save $300 and then you're going to pay full retail price. And so uh, it's going to be amazing. Uh, really the top watercolor artists in the world. And we have instructors all over the world. It's virtual. So you're, you're safe. Uh, you're at home and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and my deal is I, I want people to be happy. So if you watch the first day and after the end of the first day, and they're long days, by the way, if you don't feel like you get uh, your entire week's worth of money. This is a four-day event. Uh, if you didn't, didn't feel like you got your entire money's worth in the first day, um, let us know. We'll refund 100% of your money. That's how confident we are that you will have an incredible experience. So that's called watercolorlive.com. Check that out. Um, thank you for being here today. And thanks to Ellen Howard. Today's day number 295. I'm Eric Rhodes from Plen Air Magazine and Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. Uh, we do all kinds of things. And if you want to find out all the things that we do, go to streamlinepublishing.com slash everything. We have um, newsletters, magazines, products, a TV channel that you can get on Roku and Amazon and Apple. Uh, we have uh, virtual events. We have live events. Well, this year, not so much. Uh, or last year, not so much. The Plan Air Convention uh, is coming up uh, in May, hopefully. And uh uh, we have artist retreats and we have uh, art instruction videos, hundreds and hundreds of them and lots of other stuff. So just go there and check it out. Streamlinepublishing.com slash everything. And thank you for watching today. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plan Air Magazine and Streamline Art. Uh, remember, stay positive in spite of all the craziness that's going on, in spite of perhaps your fears or your angers or your or whatever your mindset happens to be remember fear kills stress kills you don't want to embrace fear you've got to embrace things that are going to make you feel good about yourself that's why i do the show every day I give you something to think about something to try something to practice maybe some of you are in lockdown something to keep you busy uh, we've had hundreds and hundreds of artists from around the world tell us things like I started painting because I started watching this show. I, st I haven't painted in 30 years, but I started painting again because of watching this show. And, and I'd love to hear your stories, and I'd love to hear your comments on what you would like for day 300. I am honored that you would give me an hour of your time today. Make sure to tune in today at 3 o'clock for Johnny Lillidall. Have a terrific day. Bye-bye. <laughs>